Welcome to JSA TV, where we are having conversations with leaders in digital infrastructure about the stories, innovations, and trends happening here at MetroConnect 2025. My name is Emily Scherer for JSA, and I'm really excited to talk to our next guest, Manny Vivar. He is the CEO and founder of Hostime. Manny, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Emily. Appreciate you sitting down with me. Absolutely. And so I'm really excited about talking to you because you have such an interesting backstory. How you came into the industry is really interesting. So I'm wondering if you can share that with our viewers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I say that we kind of stumbled into the industry by accident. Um, I was an aspiring commercial pilot and I went to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Florida. Um, And, you know, when I was in junior, uh, you know, in school, I... They used to have a IT closet, mini data center. And, you know, one of the first kind of like tasks, my IT director said, hey, who can figure out how to store some of this data offsite? So I kind of raised my hand. I was like, I don't know, but I can probably figure it out because I love fascinated by it. And I found a data center, the OU industry, you know, veterans will know there's a, a, a legacy data center in New Jersey called Network Access Center. I rented, you know, little space in a rack there for $60. You know, turned it around, deployed it for the school for $200, and that was kind of like my seed money. And from there, you know, I was fascinated with, you know, providing that to the school, kind of set up, a, you know, the infancy of what host time is today back in 2003. Um, Suddenly, we're getting customers left and right on the website, created this whole back-end automation where they were being deployed. And, you know, Google back then, honestly, was very easy to rank top five, so I kind of reverse engineer the algorithm. It was, you know, kind of like number one in data, you know, kind of hosting type of deal. And at the peak of it, we were getting like 250 customers a day, which was insane. You know, continue to roll that cash, you know, you know, got up to about 50 racks in the data center in New Jersey. And then I was, you know, spending so much paying them. I was like, I can use this money and build my own kind of data center. So we started out in Orlando in 2003 and, um, you know, rented some space in a building, build out the infrastructure, you know, use that cash flow, build out in Brazil, yeah. you know, use that cash flow, build out in Mexico, use that cash flow, build out in Colombia, yeah. you know, and it's been an amazing, you know, obviously the industry has exploded, you know, um, you know, and for us, it's always been about, you know, serving, you know, markets that are underserved, um, you know, and it's just been really an amazing journey. You know, I've always been passionate about tech. You know, and, you know, I think we really stumbled on on something that, you know, we, we love doing and we're good at. And, you know, I think it's win win for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, just to emphasize what you just said, you started with sixty dollars because yes. I think sometimes people think about digital infrastructure and think that these are massive companies. You yeah. have to have millions and millions of dollars to even get started or to run a data center. Yeah. And the fact that you started with 60 bucks. Yes, you're, it's you're here. It's, it's honestly mind boggling it to me and it's humbling, you know, because yeah. it's like if it's very hard. It has been very hard, you know, very challenging to do it. You know, I feel like we've done it the hard way. So as you can imagine, it's like, how do you get from 60 to a platform like this? You know, you, I say you roll up your sleeves, you, you know, we kind of self-perform a lot of the work we act as, you know, as operators, developers, you know, and then basically capital funders. So it's extremely hard, but it's, you know, I think that comes with kind of like the territory. We, we loved what we do and we had to figure it out. So I think we've kind of stretched out the, what's the, the meaning of efficiency of capital, yeah. you know, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I think, you know, it's been such an amazing journey that it's like, you know, it's like, wow, like if you give me 60,000, I don't think we could do it again. A lot of stuff <laughs> yeah. had a line at the right time, you know, right. because, you know, to, to say like, go build a global business without being in these countries, like, you know, it's humbling, you know, but yeah. I think it's, that kind of goes with the line and like, you know, we were meant to be, you know, like we were meant to do this, you know, yes. given our background, you know, our understanding of the market, you know, and being in a space that's very high capex, but, you know, it's possible, you know, I think, and I, I think we led with purpose and passion and, and I think everything else kind of came together. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, one of my professors who actually, maybe he's tuned in, used to say, yeah. do what you love and the money will follow. And that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, right now, honestly, right? I, like you had a passion for it. We did. And honestly, I never saw this long term, you know, and I think, you know, we were in the space early on, you know, being in other data centers. And then we picked up that a lot of the data centers that we were in were like old telecom facilities, yeah. you know, not trying to devalue their purpose. But I think that's where Hostine came in, you know, like, yeah. hey, like we need to be building stuff better, you know. And yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. you know, that purpose felt like of us building the next generation of data centers, yeah. you know, and we sit in a very kind of unique space where we call it hyper edge. 
three to ten megawatts. You know, I think our sweet spot is you know so, you know two two megawatts on under deployments because you know we love serving that ecosystem. You know, going into markets that are underserved. And then build in that I call Penn Station effect with the carriers. You know they penetrate the market. The content gets served locally, and then you also have you know hyperscalers or, or you know applications we need yeah. to serve in the market. Serve that really well, and then you also give opportunity to the market. Yeah. You know I think you know Colombians, Brazilians, Peruvians. I mean every country, yeah. if you have the right tools and infrastructure, it will foster. You know, yeah. and I think that feels very aligned. You know because knowing that my family immigrated to this country legally. You know, now we can bring that the jobs and the impact in these countries. Yes. You know, like I think that's very beautiful. You know, and I think you know it serves everything, and it just feels very you know aligned. You know. Yeah, yeah, and you, yeah, you've touched on this. So yeah, just to um, make it clear for viewers as well. So you are headquartered in Florida, yeah. but you service a lot of different markets. Yeah. So we, you know, obviously Orlando is where we kind of were born. I call it so. You know, we're wrapping up building a brand new tier four, you know, hyper edge facility that will serve the market really well. And then acts kind of like as a launch pad for us because, you know, we have customers everywhere. And then, you know, some of them don't need in-country data. So then they can use that facility there. Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, obviously, you know, that's kind of like headquartered there. Um, and, you know, we operate a unique structure where we are U.S., you know, holding company with international footprint and, yeah. you know, a structure that rolls everything up. So a lot of our customers like that because they don't have to deal with the bureaucracy or the, you know, the creating entities in these countries. But we can service you anywhere, you know. So anywhere from, you know, applications to AI to blockchain to streaming. I mean, we talk a, a big spectrum. You know, we have about 8,000 customers on an entire platform. Um, you know, and we like, like I said, one megawatt, two megawatts of customers, 20 kilowatt, 30 kilowatt, even down to the rack level. Yeah. You know, we serve it really well, I feel, you know, and we don't have high concentration of customers. And we're very relationship based. You know, a lot of our customers like that they can do, you know, one relationship in the U.S. and then do multiple entities without having to deal the, like I said, you know, creating entities in these countries. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. And then you're also expanding in Peru. So I would love to hear about that project. Yeah. Well. You know, I. Peru is honestly a market we're very, um, you know, gun ho about. We have a lot of customers that are existing customers in our facility in Florida right now that, you know, have demand in Peru. We also have a pipeline of customers that, you know, that we keep here in Peru and we use uh, internet penetration as another data point. It's been a long time coming. You know, we already uh, have land options that, you know, we're hoping to execute this year and start building next year. I uh, love that market. And again, it's it's underserved, you know. And we're excited to definitely bring, you know, that sort of infrastructure that, you know, that is lacked in the country, not just for the locals, you know, the local businesses, but also for, you know, people who are trying to bring content in the country. You know, yeah. there's a ton of opportunity there. And we're looking to serve both the front end, I called, and the back end. Yeah, well, congratulations yeah. on that. Thank That's going to be a really exciting build out. So, yeah. yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. And then finally, I got to ask you about the orange. We've got, uh, is this your laptop yes. up here with all the orange on it? Yeah. It's a color you're wearing. It's We've been calling it guerrilla marketing. Yeah. Tell us, why is that the color of Hosea? Uh, you know, I say we bleed orange, you know, honestly. Yeah. You know, I say orange picked us, to be honest with you. We never picked orange ever since we kind of host them was born. You know, I remember there was an agency that we hired to create the logo. And they created like this orange logo and it was like, this is us, you know, and yeah. from there, you know, it's been phenomenal. It's been a very differentiator for us. But I feel like orange is, is it's a good color of mix of, you know, you know, hey, I'm present, you know, but it's more like, you know, it's, it's very genuine, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for those who believe in the science of colors, you know, yeah. I think orange emits, you know, positivity and a lot of great other characters that are resemblance of host time. You know, and somebody actually told me recently, which I didn't even know, you know, we've been in Orlando since 2003. Say, like, yeah. you know, we're actually headquartered in Orange County. And it was yeah. like, OK, this is this is meant to be like, it's you know, be. and, you know, you know, it just it, it just emits our culture. Yeah. It, it emits opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, it emits passion. It emits all the things that Post Time represents. And I think it's more like, hey, we're here, you know, yeah. and we're orange and this is Host Time. 
Yeah, I love it. Well, it's yeah. easy to find Manny here at Metro Connect yeah. because just look for the guy in the orange. And Manny, thank you so much for your time and for stopping by. I really thank you so much. It. I appreciate you guys covering the event really well and look forward to seeing your other videos. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And to our viewers, uh, thanks for tuning in here at Metro Connect 2025 and happy networking. See you guys. Bye. Thank you.